Once you have gathered all of the material garnered from your conversations with family elders and all that you already knew, you have begun to create a basic family tree. A handwritten one will do very well for starters. Always start with you and work back. We will look at how to do this in more detail in the next video. Once you have carefully reviewed your family held documents and captured that information that has helped you to build your family story, the gaps in your knowledge will start to become clear. Gaps will be things like the place and date of an important family event, a birth or a wedding, the countries where your family emigrated from and when they came, who were your grandmother's parents and who is that guy in a suit that nobody can name in the family photo album with his arm around your great great grandmother. Every family has these mysteries. Very few of us has a clear or vivid knowledge of our family's past. Just snippets and vague memories or assumptions. You will be amazed to discover how many of these mysteries can be solved through sourcing records and documents held in public records. There are many reasons why a government collects information and data. Mostly it's to help organise a society. Birth rates and population movement impact town planning, the need for schools and hospitals, aged care facilities, roads and ports. Census data, registrations of vital life events, births, deaths, marriages, shipping and immigration records, voter registration, deeds and land holdings, all help town planners and legislators respond to their findings. come under the notice of authorities? Did they break a law? Did they fail to pay a fine? Did they come before the courts? Or worse, did they find themselves in Her Majesty's prison? Was one of your ancestors' wills challenged by an aggrieved heir? Were they placed for their own safety in a children's home, a mental asylum, a public hospital or an orphanage? Did they ever become bankrupt or die in suspicious circumstances? Perhaps they worked in the public service, a policeman, a school teacher, a nurse or a politician. You may have ancestors who played a role in enormous human events such as wars, uprisings, natural disasters or major migration events to the new world of the Americas or Australasia. When people become the responsibility of the state, there will be thorough records. The military, teachers, police and public servants are all employed by the state and there will be records of their service, their qualifications and their entitlements. Public institutions such as orphanages, schools, hospitals, child care facilities, local councils, social security and universities are all required to keep records and manage them. We all leave a paper trail. Whilst we are possibly more documented than any other generation, our ancestors also left a paper trail. Many churches in many villages have baptismal records that date back hundreds of years. Many of the records held by the public are protected by privacy laws, particularly during a person's lifetime. However, after a passage of time, these privacy laws can be lifted. Once the greater part of a generation and their children have gone, the need to protect their vital information becomes less critical. is the process that has begun at the time of a person's death to settle their estate. In Melbourne, 
many probate records are held here at the Public Records Office of Victoria. For records that were created between 1841 and 1925, many of them have been digitised and can be accessed online. For records that were created after 1925, you can order them online and view them here in the reading room at the Victorian Archives Centre. In Victoria, Australia, we are lucky to have the Registry of Births, Deaths and Marriages here in Collins Street in Melbourne. In this office, they hold all birth, death and marriage certificates that have been recorded in Victoria since 1836. All these records have been digitised and can be obtained online for a fee. It is very likely that in your state capital or in your major cities, that there will be purpose-built facilities that hold documents and public records. Here in San Francisco, one of the most important buildings is here at the San Francisco Public Library where they have a whole floor that's dedicated to historical documentation. Laws will vary from country to country and state to state. Increasingly, these records are being digitised and held on microfiche or in computer databases, as these save space and also preserve the information, as paper records can deteriorate over time or be destroyed. These records are held in trust and form a significant part of our shared heritage. They can be accessed by anyone, by historians, legislators, academics and increasingly family historians like you. Genealogical websites such as Ancestry.com, Find My Past and Family Tree have made it a core part of their business to digitise historical records from all over the globe and make them available to their fee-paying members. These are being expanded every day and are significant contributors to the development of family history as a serious historical study. In another video, we will explore and compare these important websites more closely. This may all sound incredibly overwhelming. Don't worry. Start with the universal life events. Start with the birth, death, marriage and sometimes divorce records. Just these records alone can provide a wealth of exciting and often surprising information about your family. Some of the most exciting information I've learnt about my family have come from these records.